Hello and welcome to the Moncast. A podcast where twice a week we watch Pokemon and Digimon in tandem and discuss the similarities and differences that they share. My name's Stevie. And I'm Sam. The score currently stands at 3-2 to Pokemon and this time we are watching episode 6, Togemon in Toy Town and Clefairy and the Moonstone. The first episode we are watching this time is Togemon in Toy Town. The gang start off where we left off, by wandering around and feeling sorry for themselves, when they encounter Poo. Sexist Poo. Creepy sexist Poo that flirts with a ten-year-old girl. As they run away from said Poo, they wind up in a town full of abandoned toys, complete with its own giant stuffed animal in the form of Monzimon, who ends up trapping the Digimon and enslaving the kids, all apart from Mimi, has to face her fears and defeat Monzimon to rescue her friends. Very nice. Poo. I like the word poo. You should have said Noom Sludge every time. No, it's not Noom Sludge. I'm not calling it Noom Sludge. It's poo. Noom Sludge. It's literally poo. It's hair mousse. It's not hair mousse. It's Noom Moose. So, what did you like about this episode? I liked the bit where the kids talk for a bit at the start. No, don't. That's one of the first things I've written down. Well, we can both talk about it then. Where they talk about the things they miss from the real world. I thought it was quite nice. Yeah, it was a very genuine reaction to the situation that they're in. Like, they're getting homesick because they're in this whole new world that they know very little about and it's very scary. It's the first sort of proper moment they've got where they're sort of safe-ish because when they're sleeping outside, they're still outside so anything can attack them. But in the in the sewers, sort of, it's one stretch of terrain they have to go through so they've got that time to sort of stop and think about what they're doing and it's nice to see them talking about all the things that they've missed from their home lives basically and it's nice that it's all of them that are talking about it as well right as much as i like it when they focus on one character in each episode when they do actually talk as a group and they do it well that's a really nice conversation what was something that you liked i like toy town it was during this episode Six episodes in, that I worked out that File Island is a place from Digimon World 1, because Toy Town's in that. And it didn't even occur to me. And, like, Toy Town's in that, and it's a place where, spoilers, you can unlock Monzimon's evolution. And I can't believe it's taken till this episode to realise that File Island is the place in the game, and that they are in the place that the game's in. Wait, you've never actually realised that before? No, I did not. Wow. (laughs) At no point did my brain go... Remember that game that you've played obsessively? It's it's that place from there, even though there's literally Toy Town. The city is called File City in the game. I know, but I forgot. How have you never made that connection before? I just, I don't know. But now thinking about it and the, the first set of episodes we get, this first arc, it all lines up so perfectly about all the places they go and things they see. And it's like, oh yeah, that's pretty cool. So now I feel like an idiot. <laughs> Also, I'm surprised they didn't throw a little Easter egg of one of the original V-Pets in here because they were toys that could have been abandoned. It would have been pretty cool just to see one of them sort of just on a desk somewhere or thrown somewhere. I think you're giving them too much credit. I am. (laughs) They've put in one reference to the V-Pets. They did, and I'm really happy that I saw it because I had to pause to find it. Is it my turn? Yep. I like the fact that Monzimon just stands around while Palmon explains who he is instead of attacking them immediately because it's dumb. And I like dumb things, because they amuse me. Monzimon's kind of interesting, especially for an enemy. It's the first time something's not trying to kill them. Except it does try to kill them. It's not trying to kill them, though, is it? It's trying to enslave them so that the toys can play with the kids. So they're not threatened with death, they're threatened with being controlled. He does use the laser eyes quite a lot on Mimi. (laughs) He can kill one of them. Who needs Mimi? All that Mimi would do is tell bad jokes. Mm, And complain about missing shopping. Anything else you liked? We've mentioned the threat. I like how it's not let's kill the kids. It's let's hypnotize the kids and and get them to play with the toys or have the toys play with them, which which is cool. It makes me wonder if they're fully aware of what they're doing whilst they're being hypnotized. Like, are they aware that they're being chased by these things and they're saying they're having fun, even though they're not, and they're just screaming inside their heads? That's awful. That's dark. That is actually pretty creepy. Mm, I can imagine them just being like fully aware of everything that's going on around them, but they're unable to control it. Yeah, the idea of having absolutely no control of your own body is a scary thought. It's an odd power to have as well. It's not really an attack. 
Well, I suppose, like, if Monzo Mon sort of did that to another Digimon, he could get them to walk off a cliff or something. He just turns them all into lemmings. Is there anything you liked about this episode? Everyone becomes mini Brocks. They, they do? When Monzo Mon captures everyone and puts them to sleep, they all have Brock's eyes. It's a subtle reference to Pokemon that I'm pretty certain wasn't intentional, <laughs> but they just become Brock. It's just like, oh my god, Mini Brock is everywhere now. Mini Brock was my favourite thing. So to have them turn up in Digimon as well now. Is that your favourite thing in this episode? No, <laughs> my favourite thing last time. I really like Togemon. Togemon is cool. I think it's one of the best designs out of the out of the chosen children's partners. I think it's really cool. Well, for the champions in a way, except Greymon, because Greymon's the best. But uh, Cacti with boxing gloves on, it's really interesting. It's really simple as well. It's a simple premise, but it's also pretty cool. I like the noises that Togemon makes in the fight. So, like, Ugh! And the sound effects in the fist fight. Punching. It's like, Ugh! Ugh! <laughs> It has the worst sound effects. I like how physical Togemon is as well. All the other ones seem to just launch an attack at a distance for their main attack. Togemon just gets in there with its fists. Apart from Needle Spray. Or in the Japanese version, Chico Chico Bang Bang. Really? Which is the best title of a move ever. Oh, you Chico Chico Bang Bang, Chico Chico Bang Bang. <laughs> is there anything else you liked? Palmon gets a lot of development. Mimi doesn't, but Palmon does. Nah, Mimi's development happens a lot later on. I know, it's just this episode fails to develop Mimi, really. But we learn that Palmon's not afraid to stick up for herself and get in there and fight. Mm. Palmon's feisty. That's the, exactly the word I would have used if I'd thought of it. Can you not words very well? I wasn't trying to think of words. Anything else you like? I'm, I'm done with likes now. Not really. I have quite a few dislikes. Oh, I have one. Ooh, interesting. Can you guess what it is? Can you guess by my synopsis? Numemon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, stop stop hitting on Mimi. She's a 10-year-old girl. Stop trying to flirt with a child. They are garbage, literally, and in the way they act. Numemon treats Mimi like the writers treat Mimi. They just treat her like an object. I feel like they could have approached it in, in a way that's a little less creepy. Like they could have said, oh, she's really pretty. Oh, she's really, really cool. Wouldn't you want to be my partner or something like that? Not in a way that like, that's all sort of creepy weirdo. I think that's the, the phrase of the week for me. Creepy weirdo. Creepy weirdo. They're just, she's 10. Stop sexualizing a 10 year old girl, please. No one wants this. Considering this is supposed to be the Mimi episode, I actually felt that it was more of an episode about Numemon. It focuses so little on Mimi and so much on what the Numemon do for Mimi. That is basically, we develop the Numemon more than Mimi, and that's not good. No, I do feel like Mimi and Sora's episodes, they've, they've both had so little development. Sora had decent development. She did? I don't remember. The Sora and Bioman's episode, that was a good. I liked that one. This one, though, it's not a... <laughs> it's just all about the Numemon. Is this a Mimi episode or a Numemon episode? I can't actually remember most of what happens in this episode. Like, I watched it a few days ago and I, I cannot remember. Oh, the Numemon chase everyone. The Numemon are in the vending machines. The Numemon fancy Mimi. The Numemon ask Mimi out. The Numemon save Mimi from Monzaemon. Twice. Because they help her hide and then they build a wall. It's like, it's all about the Numemon and not about Mimi. Anything else you don't like about this episode? They have the usual reusing the same footage thing again and again problem. That is always there. That's because of the time there. That's like, it saves money using the same footage instead of making new ones. Also, Mimi doesn't seem to really care about her f- supposed friends that much. She finds them in Toy Town and instead of trying to talk to them, she just watches them all run past. It goes, oh, that's weird. But it's it's Mimi. She, I don't think she 100% knows what's happening around her. She knows that it's nothing like them to act this way, but she doesn't try and pull one of them aside or stop them. She just watches and then carries on walking around the theme park because that's all she cares about. She's like, oh, I'd love to go to an amusement park. She doesn't go there to try and find her friends. She goes there because she wants to see the amusement park. She does seem a bit like a, a one fact mind. Like she's easily distracted. They don't do this ba- bad <laughs> that's this episode i don't like it yeah it was a bit of a difficult one considering it's got one of my favorites in it's also a bit of a difficult one it's a great episode for palman mm. it's an awful one for mimi it's following that that pattern again of of new monster fight monster someone's in trouble evolve win like in the last one it had that strategy so even though it was like it's on the same level as the last episode but in the last episode they had strategy brought into it which sets it apart like in this episode um it's all pretty similar the only change is that they're not getting killed they're getting enslaved which is 
you know, still a bad thing to happen. Mimi just wasn't involved at all. Mimi didn't need to be in this episode. <laughs> Palmon should just go solo. Palmon was my favourite thing in this episode. She's the saving grace in an otherwise dark and depressing episode. But it's Toy Town, it's super shiny and fun. But it's not, because it's, it's full of poo monsters. <laughs> Toy Town is full of poo and blotchy backgrounds. My favourite thing was Togemon because Punchy Cacti is Punchy. Oh, that's pretty much the same thing. It's the same character. So we have the same favourite character. Just in different stages. It's cool. Yeah, I think apart from that, there wasn't there wasn't much else I could say about this episode. It, it, it's okay. I wouldn't say it was okay. You wouldn't? I really disliked this episode. It suffers from all of Mimi's problems from previous episodes, except it's focused entirely on those problems. So it's just bad. <laughs> The second episode we are watching is Clefairy and the Moonstone. Ash, Brock and Misty stumble across Seymour the Silly Scientist being attacked by Zubat in broad daylight. After saving him, he explains that someone has put lights up in Mount Moon, disturbing the Pokemon living there. Of course, Team Rocket is guilty, as they're searching for the Moonstone spoken of in Legends. Team Rocket almost blasts off, and the group are led to the Moonstone by Clefairy. Team Rocket returns, and attempts to make a quick getaway, but the Clefairies use metronomes that they really blast off this time. P.S. Gary leaves graffiti for Ash. So what did you like about this episode? The scientist is silly. He's definitely unique. He is definitely a character. Do you notice how he rhymes at certain points for like no reason? (laughs) He just becomes a poet. He's such an oddball. Did you recognise the voice as well? Who is it? Same voice actor who voices Meowth. Really? (laughs) Yeah. They don't have the biggest voice cast, do they? I suppose it saves money if they just sort of get people to do different characters instead of hiring new voice actors. Well, he's definitely um, an obscure character, to say the least. I don't think we're going to see him again. It's part of a long tradition of Ash meeting people going, I will meet you again, and never meets them again. He decides to live with the Clefairy in the mountain. And potentially go to space. This is a parody of Avatar. He's going to become a Clefabel. Clefabel? Clefable. You just called it Clefable. Clefable. Clefabel. You said Clefabel. Clefabel. I don't care. Whatever, I don't care. Clefable. 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 I remember that. Like, this one time Clefairy, as it evolves into Clefable, I just remember that little sound clip. I really like the poker charades. <laughs> Oh, that was funny. Had to do with Pikachu. It's a fun way of pointing out, like, the plot hole of Pokemon only saying their names. And also, Ash can't actually speak Pikachu. No. He pretended to in the second episode. <laughs> Pika Pika Power? Pika Pika Power? <laughs> they all suck at charades, though. So. Yeah, that was a highlight of the episode. Also, it finally happened. <laughs> Team Rocket finally blasted off. Yes, they did. First episode. For real... But what will be the first episode where they say again? The next episode, maybe? Who knows? Also, did you notice how it took them seconds to dig a giant hole to get the stone and also put it on a wooden sled? <laughs> yeah. Like, in seconds, it's like, wow, that's, that's that's some skill. I don't know why they don't become miners. That's clearly their talent. They have the lights for it. <laughs> they can make hole tunnels. And, like, professional lighting as well. It's all strung up in a nice way. Oh, Team Rocket, your skills are wasted. Team Rocket's goals right now are just get in the way of Ash or do something bad. Like, what are they going to do with the giant rock? I don't know. They're going to get to the bottom of the hill and then what? Like, going to get arrested. Is there anything else you liked about this episode? Um, I quite liked the battle with Butterfree and Zubat against Coughing and Ekans because I like Butterfree, as you are well aware. You know what I like? One simple little phrase. Gary was here. Ash is a loser. That really cracked me up. The graffiti. Like, that's so specific that it's just there. You must have known I should see it. Well, that was the plan. Also, it's nice that there's this that little reminder that Gary's still a thing that's happening. He's got his own little adventure going on. And the two mystery trainers, which we still know nothing about. I'm actually looking forward to finding out what Pokemon Gary has. Because they're going to be so much better than Ash's. He's going to get wrecked. I always look forward to Ash getting wrecked. Really, that's pretty much everything I liked about this episode. Mm, and me. I didn't, like we said about Digimon, it's just not a lot happens in this episode. It, it's very much filler. So, dislikes... Clefairy slash Clefable, when they're bouncing around the stone, that's super annoying. I know. So much of people just saying, Clefairy! It gave me such a headache listening to it. They say Clefairy way too much. It's like, Clefairy! Clefairy! And there's like 30 of them doing it. Oh. They had more silly Pokemon conversations as well, but at least they weren't 
two minutes long. You don't like it when the Pokemon interact with each other, do you? You just prefer it when they're sort of kept in their own line, like the little slaves they are. <laughs> Who said you could talk to each other? Pikachu's just let loose to talk with everyone, and it gets boring. I mean, let's ha- let's have a little experiment. I'm going to say Pikachu, and you say Clefairy, and we'll see how long it is before listeners get bored. I'm not doing that with you. Pikachu! What I'm going to do is give you a little interesting fact. Have you ever read the uh, Pokemon manga? No. There's one of them. I think it's the originally they planned for Ash to have Clefairy as it as his main Pokemon. I think that's in one of the story in the, one of the manga as well. That'll be weird. They reference it. There's an episode where um, they look at films, and one of the films um, has a character with a Clefairy. So yeah, imagine having Clefairy as the mascot for Pokemon. It's pink. It's a marshmallow with wings and a quiff. It has like a swirl on its head. It's an ice cream strawberry ice cream oh man now i want strawberry ice cream <laughs> anyway is there anything else you didn't like the bit where seymour's being attacked by the zubat and the first thing ash does is just get out the poke in it <laughs> oh what are these it's like ash doesn't matter just just get something out and and, and and fight them ash is just like hmm hmm reading Whilst he's got literally two gym leaders with him. Well, oh, has the Pokedex always been called Dexter, by the way? I don't know. I think it's a nickname that Ash gives it. All of a sudden, Ash calls it Dexter. It's just like, do Pokedex have names? I just assume it's a nickname that he's given to it, because it's Ash and he's ten. But you don't have nicknames that are longer, usually. It's fine. It's in the plot. It's fine. Call it Pokedy. That sounds awful. Favourite thing in this episode? I still have like a couple dislikes. Okay, what were they? Because I'm, I'm done with mine. Okay, well, at the start of the episode, the narrator basically confirms that every legend that they mention in the episode is true. So there's no suspense in the episode whatsoever. It's not like they've made this legend or mentioned it earlier in the series and then it's turned out to be real. They basically just say, it's a legend. It's not a legend. It's, it actually happened. So there's a legend that uh, Pokemon come from space. So it's true. Confirmed. Hashtag confirmed. <laughs> the narrator's just like, our adventurers are about to find that all of the legends are true. It's like, oh, thanks for just spoiling this entire 20-minute episode. Anything else? Or can we move on? No one stumbled across this cave in Mount Moon before, and it's a pretty big cave entrance. Mm, and it wasn't difficult to find the moonstone as well. It was kind of just there. Also, what's, what's with all the tiny moonstones? I'm assuming as as it fell to Earth, bits of it broke off, and they're sort of the Clefairy have gone out to get those pieces and to bring them back. And then it makes them evolve. Maybe. Somehow. Also, they like they seem to like explosions way too much. Maybe the fourth massive explosion we've had. So the running themes in Pokemon. Explosions, Pikachu being supercharged, Team Rocket blasting off, Ash being overconfident. Clefairy, Clefairy, Clefairy. Uh, no. The Clefairy are using their metronome attack. I've never seen them use it before. I will now talk in a weird way in time with the thing because that's the animation. And apparently they all get the same metronome and that metronome is, I don't know, self-destruct? Probably. (laughs) But it's not because they survive. Could be Fire Blast. They just all happen to get Fire Blast and it goes straight up. Okay, moving on. (laughs) Team Rocket are fireproof. They're explosion proof. Yeah, because they get blasted off so much, they have to be resistant to it. <laughs> They're invincible. So, what was your favourite thing in this episode? Team Rocket's blasting off for the first time! <laughs> it was the moment I was waiting for. It's nice to see it for the first time, it was really cool. Like, halfway through the episode, Meowth sort of blasts off because Misty battles him. That's the first battle we've seen Misty do, isn't it? No, that's the one where she sends out a fish. <laughs> yeah, there's that one. She throws a fish on the floor. Yeah, Misty's battle was pretty cool. It was nice to see Misty being a lot more competent because they're in water. Wait, was Misty swimming or standing up? Standing up. Yeah. It just seems like it took forever for the Pokeball to reach the bottom of the river. She's going to have to swim down for that after. Or it's going to be swept away by the current. <laughs> She's not going to get it back. How heavy must these Pokeballs be? I imagine they're fairly heavy. They're heavy enough to not be swept away by a river's current. It was only a tiny little river anyway. It was a stream. Yeah, Meowth just gets filled with water and then flies away. Oh, Meowth. This episode's so predictable. Like, at the start, when he said that lights being popped, I was just like, I bet Team Rocket put up the lights. And of course, it was Team Rocket. There's only one villain in this series. I hope we get more variety of villainous characters at some point. We do. I'm pretty sure we get 
something pretty cool happening soon that I quite like. I hope it's soon. I think it's either in the next episode or the episode after. I can't remember. What was your favourite thing? Brock. Just throughout this episode, catching Zubat off screen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I caught a Zubat, but no one saw it. She's like, oh, yeah, I caught it earlier. While you were there checking your Pokédex, I just caught one. <laughs> this is, like, Brock's first step in his soon-to-be long history of catching non-rock type Pokemon. He gets a group of Pokemon that aren't rock types, which is kind of cool because, like, as I've probably mentioned before, like, I specialize in ground types. And, uh, like, I also have a second group of Pokemon that I use. Ones that are mixed types. So it's nice to see a gym leader who has a specialty also go out of their type of their gym. It's nice to see them catch Pokemon whenever they want. I, it was a bit weird how they sort of just fobbed it off as, I caught it whilst everybody wasn't looking. <laughs> Suddenly have this Zubat. I guess they don't want to see, they don't want us to see other people catching Pokemon apart from Ash. Brock's a side character. He's just following along. Brock's just going to be there for comedy, isn't he? Yeah. It's weird when you look at the characters. When we first meet everybody, the first time we see someone, they're all kind of serious and stuff and all, I don't know, more mature acting. And then when they become a regular character, they become these silly people. I think Misty, it doesn't happen to, which is quite nice. I'm glad Misty's not this girly girl who can't do anything by herself. You mean Mimi? (laughs) Yeah, I'm glad she's not Mimi. But then they also fall down with Brock being a creep. Mm Mm-hmm which we see soon, which I'm not looking forward to. Overall thoughts? I remember not liking this episode when I was younger, and I'm not sure why. Quaferi! 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 I know why I don't like this episode. It was alright. It progressed the plot a bit. It's the first episode we see the trio travelling together, which was cool. It was filler. It was okay. It was meh again. It was meh. <laughs> so meh. Poke meh. Poke meh. Yeah, it was cool. It was it was an okay thing that happened. It was decent. It could have been much worse. It could have been Digimon this week. <laughs> now it's time for Mono A Mono, where we talk about the similarities and differences in these episodes. So let's start with our monsters of the week, but not actually week, but who cares? Mine's Numamon because they're garbage and they throw poo. And it's gross because they're slug things. And it's not Noom Sludge, it's clearly poo. It's their biggest threat yet. It's not death, it's drowning in poo. <laughs> They're just awful, and they're just this in Digimon. They they're the iconic example of things going bad. Like if you raise a Digimon in a bad way in the in the V pets, you get a Numamon. It, it's not. It's like one of the weakest champion levels and stuff. It's not the best. Yeah, but in Digimon world, it was just like instant Digivolve to Monzaemon, which was pretty cool. I suppose, but also only if you knew how to do it. Especially when you get the Monzaemon suit in your own city, because then you can just fall back on that if you ever get a Numamon. You can do that. I think so. So many things I don't know about this game. Also, there are so many different variations on Numamon. There's a million. I could think of maybe at least six. Numamon, Shell Numamon, King Numamon. Black King Numamon. Platinum Numamon, Gold Numamon. Is it Jermon or something? Oh, the yellow one. That that counts as a Numamon. So there's like eight at least. Seven or eight Numamons. All the Numamon we need. My monster of the week was Palmon or Togemon. Because they're the same Digimon. Because they're cool. They're feisty. They partially made up for Mimi being awful. Palmon's the good one in that duo. Which episode do you think had the best storyline? Digimon. Really? It wasn't as fillery. Pokemon's was... We've got this legendary stone. Team Rocket's gonna take it. Oh, we stopped them. Oh, we're done. Yeah, it mentioned myths and legends. It sort of did a bit of fleshing out of the world. They're not myths and legends. The real true life stories the narrator tells us so in the first minute yeah i suppose historically accurate things it was okay i think i just i don't think i enjoyed the digimon episode as much it had the better storyline but it was not enjoyable it was less filler i think digimon pokemon was definitely filler pokemon was full of filler they battled team rocket twice in the same episode that's how fillery it is have you got any similarities I couldn't think of any. I, the, the best I could get was Clefairy and Monzo Mon. They're both cute things that are dangerous. I've got, we've got like big groups of the same monster ganging up against the bad guys. True. That's good. That's good. We had all the Clefairies against Team Rocket and we had all the new Mon against Monzo Mon. So there you go. Which episode did you enjoy the most? Pokemon. Ah, oh, see, I've got Digimon for this because Togemon. Ah, well, I've got Pokemon for this because Mimi. Mimi just ruined that whole episode for me. It's so bad what they do with her. It's not fair. Okay, so who's going to get the point for this one then? I don't know. Since we disagree, we've not had this situation before. Well, didn't you say that you think 
that Digimon had the best storyline. Yeah, but I I really don't like this episode of Digimon. See, I've got I've got Pokemon the best storyline, but I enjoy Digimon more, and you've got the other way around. I just can't overlook how bad Mimi was. Okay, I'm going to say Pokemon because Digimon had Pooh flirting with a girl. At least we didn't have that in Pokemon. Give it like two episodes and we'll have Pooh flirting with a girl in that. Brock is the Pooh because he's awful. So the score currently stands at 4-2 to Pokemon. <laughs> there we go. I think the next episode might be a point for Digimon. Maybe. What's the next episode? Ikaku Man's Harpoon Torpedo. Oh yeah, okay. And we're about to talk about that bit in the introductions. Now it's time for our new segment, You Teach Me and I'll Teach You, which will be added into Saturday episodes instead of feedback, so that we can build up feedback throughout the week instead of going through it every few days. I'm pretty sure anyone who has heard of Digimon has heard the phrase, oh, isn't that just a rip-off of Pokemon at some point in their life? And whilst they show a lot of similarities, It's most certainly not true. Though it's not hard to see why that assumption could be made. They both have products in similar categories, with games and toys etc, but how similar are these products? And that's what this segment will explore. Each week Stevie and I will pick something to focus on, like video games, card games, toys, books, music and so on, and we'll spend some time comparing what each franchise has to offer. And we'll talk about which ones we owned, which ones we preferred etc. For example, if we were to talk about video games, We can compare Pokemon Red and Blue to Digimon World 1. We can talk about our favourite games, why we like them the most, which games had the best mechanics, etc, etc. This also gives those of you who don't really know all that much about either Pokemon or Digimon a chance to learn about some of the other things these shows have. I know we have a couple of listeners who don't really know a lot about Digimon. I haven't sort of watched the show before. So this week, it's just me. And I'll be going through a little bit of backstory for both franchises, explaining how they came to be and what their first products were. If you don't know, it was actually Pokemon which was created first, the idea of which came from Satoshi Tajiri, who as a child had a fondness for catching insects and tadpoles near his home in suburban Tokyo. Over time, Tajiri decided to put his idea of catching creatures into practice, to give children the same thrill he had as a child. With the help of Ken Sugimori and other friends, Tajiri formed Game Freak, and when Tajiri discovered the Game Boy and Game Boy Link cable, it gave him the image of insects travelling along the wire. Tajiri was also heavily influenced by the Ultraman fantasy television show, Ultra 7, in which the protagonist used giant monsters contained within small capsules to help him fight. Together with these two sources, he got the idea for a new game called Capsule Monsters. After several failed attempts pitching this idea to Nintendo, Tajiri's new friend, Shigeru Miyamoto, pitched it to Nintendo and soon they began to fund the project, spending six years developing the games that would become worldwide sensation. Due to trademarking issues, the name Capsule Monsters couldn't be used, so it was changed to Pocket Monsters. The original artwork for the game was drawn by Tajiri's friend and artist Ken Sugimori, whilst the music and the sound effects were composed by Junichi Masuda. The project nearly drove Game Freak to bankruptcy. Five employees quit due to financial conditions, and Tajiri worked many unpaid hours. The first Pokemon games, Pokemon Red and Green, came to the Nintendo Game Boy system in Japan on February 27th, 1996, which was the fulfilment of Satoshi Tajiri's dream and allowed people of all ages to catch, train and trade 151 creatures and become a Pokemon master. The popularity of the franchise also led to an anime series based on the games, premiering on the 1st of April 1997 in Japan. The main character was a young Pokemon trainer called Satoshi, named after Satoshi Tajiri himself, later dubbed in English to Ash Ketchum. Another character introduced in the first episode was Satoshi's rival, Shigeru, after Shigeru Miyamoto, later dubbed in the English to Gary Oak. Two months after the anime started, a new toy was released, a digital pet called Digital Monsters. Similar in style and concept to the Tamagotchi, it was released by Bandai on the 26th of June 1997. The toy began as a simple concept of a Tamagotchi targeted mainly towards boys. The V-Pet is similar to its predecessors, with the exceptions of being more difficult and being able to fight other Digimon V-Pets. Every owner would start off with a baby Digimon, train it and evolve it and take care of it, and then have it battle other Digimon owners to see who was the strongest. The Digimon pet had several evolution capabilities, so many owners had different Digimon. In December, the second generation of Digital Monsters was released, followed by a third edition in 1998. The small area of the screens, which was 16 by 16 pixels, meant that character designers had to create monsters whose forms would be easily recognisable, and as such, many of the early Digimon, including Tyrannomon, who was the first ever created, were based on dinosaurs. On March 6th, 1999, the franchise was given an anime as the first of the Digimon movies aired in theatres in Japan, 
Originally, the Digimon Adventure movie was supposed to be a short film. On March 7th, 1999, they began airing a television show titled Digimon Adventure. So yes, both franchises started within three years of each other, and whilst Pokemon came out first, they both had very different beginnings. Pokemon first coming to life as a handheld video game, and Digimon as V-Pets. Their first common ground being when they both had TV shows. Join us again next time, where we will be watching episode 7. The Water Flowers of Cerulean City and Ikakumon's Harpoon Torpedo. You can find the Moncast on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, with the Will Forums, SoundCloud and iTunes. Just search for the Moncast. Or you can email us at themoncastpodcast at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye. What just happened? <laughs> I just kicked my table. <laughs>